five minutes of this race. Green flag at the back. Signal given to the drivers. And the flag falls at Goodwood. We are racing down to Madrid Corner with a good getaway from those on the front row. Various speeds further back. But Emanuele Piro is braving it to the outside in the silver 250. Who is going to be in the lead of the race by the time that we see it? Oh, Rob Hall has hung on and he maintains the lead, converting pole position into P1. Well, all, all that could be done for Emanuele Piro was to try and hang on in the first corner. It was always going to be the Yenem coming through. But the Ferrari bread van is already halfway up the order. We're only two quarters into the opening lap of the race and pushing on very, very hard indeed, Alexander Ames. But Piro did all he could. Oh, he will He's be off. in the lead because our race leader is our spinner just oh. a kiss with the tyres just coming into St Mary's and uh, I don't know if that should have done any damage to the car but it certainly lost the lead for Rob Hall and there is our race leader Emmanuel Pirro with clear air behind him and then now up into second place goes Vincent Gay car number seven so Pirro leads a dramatic moment and a gasp from the crowd as our pole sitter spins round on the opening tour of the race and the bread van is absolutely scything through here this is amazing stuff from Alexander Ames. Had to take a quick look at any damage, potential damage on the back of the LM that started from pole. Rob Hall rotated around a little kiss on if you look on the left hand side of the screen in the back of car 526 the paintwork is a little bit scuffed. I think he might have got away with it. So from what was officially third on the grid to the race lead from Manuel Piro who's seen both of the LMs have drama. One didn't take the start, the other one spinning on the opening tour and the bread van is roaring through at the moment. Both slightly out of position. One after being disqualified from qualifying earlier on uh, in the weekend and the other one trying to recover after that dramatic moment. They're running line astern. The two cars that we're focusing on in to Madrid Corner. Well, silence and sounds and what fabulous sounds those Ferrari V12s, Alberto Columbus engine makes when being pressed hard and most certainly being pressed very hard indeed at the moment. The uh, 526, which is one the, the Ferrari LM going through the 250 LM. The bread van is following with uh, Alexander Ames. In terms of pace, Rob Paul should be able to get up back towards the front. He's on the tail of the driver in third place. That's the 250 GTO in silver of Karun Chandok. He's hunting it down just in front. Vincent Gay, but streaking clear. Emmanuel Pier Piro, three seconds clear at the end of the opening lap. He's even out of this shot as they go into the dip. Out of St Mary's. He'll be turning into... Um, while those behind are playing catch-up, most certainly 526. The, the remaining 250 LM in this race. Slightly bashed, but uh, certainly seems to be handling very well indeed. A lot of pace for Rob Hall, but he's just waiting for the straight to be able to use it. Doesn't need much of it as he makes his way through the kink. And then next up is Vincent Gay in the uh, 250 GT from 1960. That is the car being chased down by the 526. Scrap that, that's the car oh, not making the way. Hanging on to the position as we make our way through. Well, that's on someone who has raced a lot of good, and he seems to get better year in, year out, and he's got some real competition. Right, let's take a look at the gap between Emmanuel Pirro, who's leading this race, and Vincent Gay in second place. It was three seconds the end of the opening lap. Wait for it, five and a half seconds, but as soon as Rob Paul goes through, which may even be now, yep, it's looking as though it's going to be now into Magic. There was no point, Vincent Gay blocking him. Yep, you can see the scuff on the... Right, left rear corner of that 250 LM. He is now going to set off. Rob Hall, after our race leader, Emmanuel Piro. 21 and a half minutes remaining. They're going to be long minutes for Piro. <laughs> they will be. This is the moment where our race leader, our pole sitter, then race leader, then spinner, onto the grass. Round he went, and oh, it was just a, a brush with the wall. Anything more could have ended his day, but he's still in contention to win this one. And there's been plenty of moves further back as well. Here's another one for the bread van, driven by Alexander Ames. Well, he's up to fifth place, having started uh, stone last on this grid. This is Emmanuel Pirro going right out to the end of the circuit, trying to get the wonderful flow that is required. Right, lap and kick, tick. That's done on lap number three for Emmanuel Pirro, leading the way, but uh, the gap will be coming down. Fastest lap of the race so far was Pirro on the last time around, 1 minute 30.4, but I'm fairly sure the fastest lap of the race is going to be going to this driver at this early stage. We've Rob Hall playing catch-up, so rare to see him having a moment. And that one was all on his own. He was already pulling clear on the opening lap. Halfway round, got some areas, but saw it from an angle. He didn't want to see it from round. He went that tiny, tiny kiss with the tire wall. Alexander Ames now in the bread van, that bluff rear end on the... His 250 GTO. Now he's all over the tail of the driver who's still in third place, but not for long because Vincent Gay is being hunted, and I'm sure that sharp-nosed number 16, the bread van, will be going through. 
Trude Chandok behind the wheel of the number 156 Silver 250 there and ceding the position or at least trying to hang on to it around the outside, refusing to cede the position. To Van der Loft, that great racing between these two. Yeah, well, Alexander Van der Loft, just in a short wheelbase rather than the 250 GTO, made an awful, he made it almost a very good start, almost jumped the start, suddenly realised, oh no, had to back off, and then of course you lose out, he lost three or four positions in the second row, he's playing fight back, but there's Alexander Ames on the attack, as predicted, waited for his moment uh, to make that move, got the job done between Ford Water and St Mary's, and now rocketing away from Van Gay. so up into third place on the back of the grid. In another league at the moment, this battle has been continuing on and on and on, further still, and Karun Chandok takes back the place. Well, you really can't ask for more than that to have these beautiful cars not just out on the circuit circulating quickly, but also having some really, really competitive racing with plenty of dicing. By the way, last time around, Rob Paul did set the fastest lap of the race, and he took uh, a second and a bit out of the race leader, Emmanuel Impero. But still, Karun Chandok in 156 and the 250 GTO, and then brilliantly driving from Alexander Van der Loft. But you can see the various points on the circuit where one guy has a bit of an advantage. And uh, tucked in behind them, John Hugenholz is just uh, a whisk away behind in their re rearview mirrors. We go back to uh, the battle out front. And just looking at the 73, now what's happened here? What has happened here for Emmanuel Piro? Because there was a huge amount of time lost. Well, he's, he, he lapped, unfortunately, him 2.3 seconds slow in the car behind, and he's still setting a cracking pace, Piro leading this race, still quicker than everybody else, but Rob Paul's performance vantage is clear for all to see. Emmanuel Piro too wide to try and fight against it. He just uh, moved out of the way. Don't forget, if Rob Paul hadn't spun halfway around the opening lap, he'd be uh, not quite over the rise and he'd be pulling clear. But look, Rob Paul is really, really pressing on. He just wants to get enough of a gap, but Piro, well, you know, sometimes it's easier to be the hunter than the hunted, and he's now changed those roles, and he's going to see whether he can hang. So, new race leader out front, Hall recovers from that earlier spin, and now is looking at the rest of the field in his mirrors after making a tidy pass, these two in another postcode. At the moment, Piro will try and give chase as we make our way to try and complete things. But uh, when you see that sort of margin disappear, you realise it's not quite a fair fight, is it, when you've got an LM at the front of the field? But what I love is the fact that fighting is going the entire way down the field. This is the battle for fourth place. Vincent Gay and number seven still holding on in that uh, short wheelbase competition. Only in car 21, really going very, very well for Vandalov. Just a humble 250 GT short wheelbase. So not quite the full competition model, but uh, these cars, same engine, V12, just... Fabulous, fabulous cars to be seen. Again, some great camera angles. The cars snake their way through that final chicane, but all along what's happening, Rob Paul into the lead of the race and uh, pulling clear, but Piro has just put in his best lap of the race in his quest to try and at least hang on, at least keep Rob Paul inside. Rob Paul, then Piro, then Ames, who's come roaring through from the very back of the field in the so-called Red Van 250 GT short wheelbase from 1962, that's in third place, and then Emmanuel Piro in second. We're looking further back at uh, Vincent Gay, trying to hang on to the position, and not all over the back of him, trying to find a way by. Riding over the curbs, that was good. I mean, no, you have to choose your moment, and he's being slightly cautious, still cursing an awful getaway from the great for Alexander Van der Loft, but every time he's looking at the tail of Vincent Gay's Number seven right in front of him, he suddenly gets, uh, he, he lifts for a tiny second, he's got the GT, GTO closing in, Karun Chandok, what an incredible day for Karun, one minute he's racing a standard Vanguard 6, as in St Mary's trophy, and suddenly he's driving something at the opposite end, the polar opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, good news for Karun Chandok, and the good news is that car 7 and car 21, i.e. the two in front of him, that's Vincent Gay and uh, Alex Vandeloff, who find themselves with a 10-second penalty for the false start. Well, I definitely saw Vandeloff move. Maybe he moved slightly before Vincent Gay, but both been pinged. But doesn't matter. Let them race all the way to the end, end of the event. Another car going quite well is Nick Padmore. Just saw him go out of the shot. He's one place ahead of the, 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 the damage on the side of the Drogo. Don't get any more. Was from uh, rubbing against the tyre wall in practice yesterday. But uh, God, Carlos, Carlo Vogli, in, it's not 250 GTO behind. It's a 330 GTO. One of only three of those that were made. Has a larger engine. It moved out instead of being just under three litres to four litres. But uh, right now, 
that battle at the front it's still Rob Hall but only by 1.1 seconds I think Pirro is driving absolutely beautifully in second place in terms of the natural pace of these cars the 250 LM should just pull clear maybe maybe Rob Hall's decided it's a very hot day let's just stay and play and let's not too much put too much heat into these cars we're complaining about the heat it's certainly very warm here but don't forget Le Mans in June has been known to be a little on the warm side Designed to compete in these conditions. So it's Rob Hall out front. Emanuele Pirro, though, not letting him get away as they make their way through the traffic. Then Ames uh, in third place, 10 seconds further back from the battle you're watching at the moment. And Vincent Gay and Alex van der Loft find themselves with a 10 second penalty. Karim Chandok is hanging on to that battle on track. And then it's Hugen Holtz, Pat Moore, uh, Valerie, and Vogler completing the top 10 of this entertaining race. There's still 14 minutes to go. And Emanuele Perro refuses to give this one up. Well, for Ferraristi, the world over, they love obviously everything to do with Ferrari. But to see the big race like this, this is proper racing. This isn't after you, Claude, or Giampiero. This is press on, press on. Now, Karim Chandor has started to make up ground. He suddenly picked up two positions. Didn't need to because the two cars he just passed, the number seven, uh, 250 GT short wheelbase competition. There's Vincent Gay and the car behind, which is 21 on the left hand side of your screen. Both have a 10 second penalty. Here's Karun Chandok to the inside and a lovely overtake as he makes his way through in the final corners of the lap. He cleared one, then he cleared another, and he's now running in fourth position. Well, very, very good news for his team, Fika Prio, because the other car they had ended, ended in the race, the other 250 LM did not get to start from the middle of the front row. Now, we've had two cars given 10-second penalties for a jump start. Draw your own conclusions. 21, we can see move. Well, I didn't see number seven move at all, but certainly oh. Alexander van der Loft can have no complaints. He did that awful thing that you, you get the, the penalty later, but you've already banked off and then everyone has gone past you. So he automatically lost three places, but he's still in the mix and uh, it's still chopping and changing with... Karun Chandok, he got past a pair of them, he does it again under Grunt as they leave. Now they're being joined from those behind as well, so... Um, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, there was a couple of cars they were just lapping, I beg your pardon. Same colours, a red and a silver one, but uh, right now still that wonderful battle between Vincent Gay and number seven and car 21. Uh, Alexander Van Loff, oh, don't rub them, don't do that. Far too pricey to be riskier on the inside. And you know what, Vincent Gay, he absolutely knew it as uh, Van Loff had to drop back in to the wheel tracks and continue to study the rear of his rival. Still 1.2 seconds at the head of the field. Uh, Rob Hall's best lap was a 127.8. Last time around he did a 129.6 with Pirro still hanging on to him. That's one lockup away for a change of lead. Well, it really is. Now they're starting to get among the back markers. That, uh, I'm just really wondering, you look at the fastest lap that Rob Hall has done, a 1 minute 27.8, that's two, over two seconds faster than the best fastest lap of the driver in second place, Emanuele Pirro. So Pirro's driving absolutely to the potential of the car. But I think Rob Horton, he may be nursing something. Don't forget that spin going into St Mary's may have put something slightly out. But I think he's just being slightly cautious. Doesn't want to rock it away in the distance. He wants to win this race. He didn't win the race at the start of the day when the BRM just went that went a little bit sick. But uh, maybe a little bit of caution. Maybe there's damage. But oh, I'm not complaining. These two cars running within two seconds of each other. Maybe one and a half seconds, maybe. There we go. Great shot of the finger tipping through the chicane. And then to come over the line to begin another lap. Let's see what the gap is here. Looks like a better lap. The whole now. I want more than a 1.2 second lead over Emanuele Pirro, multiple Le Mans winner, an absolute master behind the wheel. It is only 1.2 seconds, it's still in the balance. We'll take you back to this ever long battle between Vincent Gay and Alex Van der Loft. You know, this is all drivers can ask for. Goodwood on a sunny day with someone in a very similar car and a fantastic dice. These are the days you remember. You might remember winning a race by three seconds, but if you've had to fight for it, it just makes it all the more worthwhile. However, Vincent Gay, number seven, and Alexander Van der Loft, 21, they'll be further down the order unless they can press on a bit more because they've got 10 second penalties uh, hanging over their heads. So there they are running up behind uh, Karun Chandok in the GTO, that's car number 156. They're having a fabulous ding dong battle, but they will potentially lose a place. Maybe not, actually, they're certainly pulling clear of those behind. So continuing to circulate, has a chance now. Good run for Van der Loft, and he uh, knows that's the case. Still no way by, though. 
that well Vincent Gay was saying on the run from Fordwater to St Mary's well if you're going past try the outside didn't work for Rob Hall on the opening lap and that was on his own he'd already got clearing that 250 LM that's car number 526 round he went he has recovered back in the lead of the race but as Alex pointed out 1.2 seconds the good matters not to these two drivers so Van der Loff in 21 and Vincent Gay in number 7 they're just having a fabulous battle we're enjoying every moment of it. Karun's had another moment. Karun Chandok. No, no, he's, the fact he's getting out so yeah. quickly, he's aware that something's gone pop as a line come off. Yeah, and, and he gets on the far side. That was the quickest exit. He parked it as soon as he could. Yeah, he knew he had to get clear of it. Karun Chandok out of the car after a run that had him in fourth place. And remembering to try and uh, kill things in the car. Uh, he needs uh, the assistance of one of the many brilliant marshals around here by the looks of things. But he's out of the race. So four, fourth place has come to nothing, but I'm more concerned about anything happening to that car right here, right now. Any racing car I adore, but a 250 GTO. Apology, have apologies if I have a slight tear running down my cheek. And marshals arrived to put out. So left rear corner. Interesting. Well, we're continuing on. Let's have a replay of the moment where Karun's race came undone. Whoa, look at that. No wonder he jumped out of it sharpish. Well, it looks like an oil line or something has uh, come adrift. And that was, well, Karun, to hold that, to get it off the circuit, to park it away safely. In fact, you can see the lick of, lick of fire under the flame under the engine and get out that quickly. That was absolutely prescient. So uh, well done to Karun there. And well done to the marshals for getting there so quickly. So high drama and fourth place becomes... No place whatsoever, and that is just, a, well, a driver's nightmare. But the fact he got out and the, the flames were suppressed uh, so quickly. So that would have been a heart-stopping moment. I think he's, or, uh, he's aged Karun a few years, almost as much as watching uh, some Kush competing in the sweat engine cut early this afternoon. So uh, ah. not too surprisingly, we've got the safety car out because uh, there is the race leader. Rob Hall has been uh, picked up. And in behind Emanuele Piro will come across about two seconds behind. And, of course, they'll run at the pace of the safety car. But with cars as valuable as these, Karun may have parked at the side of the circuit, but they have to be sure that is out forever. Emanuele Piro, cool individual anyhow, but clearly a little warmer than normal today. So the door opens to get any vestige of airflow into the cockpit. Is it hot behind the wheel? Well, there is your answer from the man who sits in second place. Uh, the gap had... Uh, gone to two seconds, but it'll be interesting to see what Emanuele can do on the restart. The uh, driver formerly of Formula One, a winner in the Le Mans 24 hours, and now heading up the young driver program at McLaren's Formula One team. As uh, everyone appears to be going for the one door open, you see so many great sights at Goodwood. This on the hottest day of the year, a rather unusual one as we uh, circulate behind the safety car. Now, we had two driver penalties at the start of the race. I'll come back to that in a second. Now, waving, slow down, slow down. And it looks as though Van der Loff had not seen the yellow flag. The wagging of the finger, almost schoolmasterly there from Vincent Gay. Do not go past me. Pay attention. Now, just to clarify, we thought, we saw full well that uh, there was a jump start from car number 21 at the beginning of the race and no movement from Vincent Gay. He also got a 10-second penalty, but apparently that's for not lining up in his grid box. So he didn't okay. jump the start, but just didn't start from the right place. There we are, clarification on that, because he definitely didn't jump the start. He wasn't parked where he should be. So uh, that has added 10 seconds to his race time as we form up behind the safety car and we bring them all together. There's a bit of a field spread out there of uh, over a minute for the field and we'll bring them all back together before we get our restart. Now, uh, with those 10-second penalties to be applied, that means John Hugenholz has a chance because he's only, what, a couple of seconds down off the tail of Van der Loff. There's the sorry side of the 250 GTO. Luckily, smoking no longer. Karun Chandok, <laughs> remarkable uh, to get out of the car, get it off the track and for the marshals to do extinguish what was a, a bit of a flash fire. There, because clearly I would reckon an oil line came off there and uh, Karun reacted unbelievably quickly. So the heart rate now is down to a mere 360 beats a minute. He's fine. Well, Karun is in all the cars all the time this weekend, but that was uh, one moment he could have done without on his very busy revival weekend. So the safety car leading the field around, waiting for any official notification as to how soon that will be coming in. And uh, always look at the lights at top, on the bar atop the safety car because they have to be out about half a lap before uh, that would ever pull into the pits uh, and release the cars to go racing again. So the fact the lights are still flashing as they come into the chicane indicates as it's a thumb up from uh, Karun. Tough luck, Karun. 
Uh, we'll have at least one further lap behind the safety car. So the marshals uh, just looking at the stricken Ferrari on the right-hand side of your picture. Well, that just gave us a chance to see the, the oldest car in the field, the uh, 250, uh, the uh, 275 Tour de France, which is uh, Richard Cook. That's car number 22. It's the dark red with the black stripe up at the back of the field. Yeah, that's the nice thing. Well, we've got a great battle for the lead. We've had a great battle for the lead, but it's also nice to pick our way through. There you go. There's the car that we're speaking about. Yeah, the 250 GT Tour de France. Tour de France, a fabulous uh, event, well, around France, surprise, surprise, but uh, using a lot a lot of public roads, and it's uh, still run as a historic event as well. But, again, great to see the bloodline of these cars as well, but uh, the thing that linked them was the, the V12 under the nose of the car. Very distinctive, and uh, that's the oldest car in the field. Uh, we uh, will hope to get back racing as soon as we can, but only when it's safe to do so. And I think they're just uh, making sure that all is... Uh, sensible with the car that's pulled to the side of the road obviously all not well because of that dramatic fiery moment that took Karim Jandok out of the Levant Cup right he's not the first one out of the race because that unfortunately befell, befell Martin O'Connell car number six which is a, another of the 250 GT short wheelbase Mark Davis's car ex Marinello concessionaires so it was red with that uh, pale blue nose the Cambridge blue nose but that was an early I don't think it was a faller it retired to the pit garage so after five laps so that one has been parked up. It will live to fight another day. Karun Chandox 250 GTO, car 156. We saw Karun just pulling off on the exit of Lavant, and uh, that was uh, a big save there, I would suggest. But everybody else still going. So 14 runners in this race. Rob Hall sitting at the front of the queue behind the safety car. His margin 1.1 seconds over Emanuele Perro. But the clock keeps counting down. The safety car keeps leading around. We're going to be only three minutes left on the clock. Let's hope they get at least released for one final lap of racing, and then it will be... Italian Brio, that'll be Emanuele Pirro trying to take on the pragmatism. Here we go, national stereotypes for Rob Hall in the 250 LM. In terms of performance, that little 250 LM should streak away, but Pirro's got his uh, tail up today, I would suggest. Yeah, he's been absolutely reveling in it behind the wheel of that car. Rob Hall, uh, very effective uh, to retake the lead, having uh, spun earlier in the race uh, when he'd uh, seen off Pirro at the start. Now, just noticing, we've got two packs of cars. By now, behind the safety car, they should really be running nose to tail from uh, four to aft, the 14 cars still in this race. But there's a gap about halfway down the order. And uh, really, in the safety car procedure, you should be closing up. Right, the lights are still flashing on the roof. We may yet get one final lap of racing. We may not, because we saw when we saw Karun Chandok's 250 GTO, it was yet to be put aboard the flatbed truck on the exit of Lavin Corner. So there it is, still on the grass now being winched back in and Karun can just stand there going well I wasn't going to win the race but I was definitely in the reckoning for a possible podium and any chance you get to race a Ferrari 250 GTO talk about hen's tea so he'll be absolutely gutted but it's another car he could put down on his amazing CV yeah absolutely and we're continuing behind the safety car here so the car looks like it's about to be recovered uh, within the next minute do we have time for a one-lap shootout. Sounds familiar, that sentence. I wonder whether we will see... Uh, there we go. Thanks to each and every marshal that surrounds this circuit for allowing us to put on the revival. And what a wonderful event it is celebrating 25 years since the first running as well. OK, we're just getting a message because we weren't going to be able to get any racing in. Three minutes have been added to the allotted time. Thank you very much to the race officials and, uh, for making that happen. So hopefully next time around the cars will be released and we can go racing because uh, these cars look great standing still, great moving slowly, but fabulous when they're being driven and driven hard. And certainly the racing uh, through the majority of this Lavant Cup, this very special Lavant Cup for these uh, Ferrari GT cars from 60 to 66 has been mighty. So let's see what we can do when the team is now finally running pretty close to most. So that's a, that's a good move. That's a really good and exciting move for all of us that we've got some extra time allowed so we can finish the race, not behind the safety car, but instead with racing all the way to the final moments and the chequered flag.
And what can Emanuele Pirro do in the number 73 entry there? Can he give us something to shout about in the final metres? We've already had that earlier today. Two really dramatic finishes in the races that we've seen today in the Barry Sheen Memorial Trophy. It went all the way to the final chicane on the last lap. And in the Goodwood Trophy, to start things off, the race decided by one-tenth of a second. With the overtaking manoeuvre coming one length of the car before the end of that race. Poor Mark Gillies was uh, monstered, but a great see a victory for Ian Baxter and an Alta. So never stop until the end of the race. Right, the end of the race will be coming soon. Hopefully the car, let's just uh, see if the lights are still on board the safety car as they work their way past uh, the, the 250 GTO. Lights still flashing. Don't forget, three minutes were added to extend this race. Come on, turn those lights off. Let's go racing again. Yeah, park it up really slowly. Won't be long until the uh, flatbed truck is off the racetrack and we have the concluding moments. And for the drivers in the line, particularly those close to the safety car, the E-Type Jaguar leading them around, they will close their doors when racing is about to happen. So two, minute, two, two minutes and 20 seconds remain on the clock. So uh, we should hopefully get that one racing lap. So Rob Hall... He's forgotten the fact. We haven't, though, Rob. He had a little spin out at St Mary's and uh, 250, and it was starting full clear on the opening lap of the race, and it dropped him down to about sixth place. And then it added to the excitement as that glorious car had to be sort of get its way, using a bit of caution, Alex, between the, the people who were hoping for a podium result, got back to the front. We thought he'd then drop Emanuele Pirro, but Emanuele has had other ideas, and uh, when the safety car came out, there was only about one and a half seconds between them. It's closed up a little bit uh, right now, but let's get this final racing lap in. Yeah, I wonder if we'll get the, uh, the message from race control one lap added at the end, because the pace that they've been circulating behind the safety car, we'd run out of time. Yeah, they're only... Uh, very early in the lap and the clock has, uh, even with the extra time, has nearly elapsed. But the job that everyone has to do, Pirro has to get on the tail of uh, Rob Hall. Everybody has to get as close as possible for this restart. And another three minutes have been offered in. The bonus ball has been added to the prize. Safety car will be in this lap. That's music by ears, the message coming into our ears. And uh, so for all the crews, let's hope they get, get the message to their drivers as soon as possible. For the drivers right now, their job is to stay on the tail of the car in front. Whether you're the car at the very back of the line there, which is uh, Richard Cook in the Tour de France. But right now, Pirro in 73 needs to get right off the tail of Rob Hall through the dip on the exit of St Mary's. Light's still going on the safety car, but they should be turned out very soon indeed. But I still expect Rob Hall to pull away on the restart of the race. But then again, I thought he was going to pull away on the opening lap of the race and round he went at St Mary's. You don't wish that on anybody. And also, the pack came so close. Just that little kiss with the uh, the tyre banding on the outside of the circuit. Now right. the lights are out and the field is starting to bunch up. Yes, the drivers are waking again. OK, lights are out on the safety car and the Jaguar will make, will make its way back to the pit lane. It's over to you, Rob Hall, to take us back to racing around the Goodwood circuit. And can anyone deny the driver who had a spin early on in the race, fought his way back through? It's also the case for the Brett van as well, who's fought through very, very effectively. Now, big contention. One little fact here. Yes, Pirro's getting right onto Rob Hall's tail. The car running third in the line, the second of those two silver cars, is Adrian Beecroft. He's a lap down, which is going to really frustrate the Ferrari bread van driver, who's in third place, but fourth in that line of cars. Right, the hammer is down. You dictate when you take off. You can't be able to take it before the start finish line. That would be the attention of Manny Pirro, but really, really good start there from Rob Hall. Should have done enough. We are racing again. Can Emanuele Pirro do anything about Rob Hall in the LM that is out front? The bread van has cleared the lap car and will go after, but I don't think there's much in the way of improvement further back. Maybe some places, but those in the top five holding position on the restart. And the good news is it's two racing laps rather than just one. They got they got going with two and a bit minutes remaining. Get some time to do this lap and get past before the checkered flag comes out. So two racing laps to conclude the running here and a much better restart by Vincent Gay than it was by uh, Alexander van der Lof. Both of them, of course, had to go past Adrian Beecroft there, so I think van der Lof lost out a little bit in uh, 21. Through St Mary's they go, but actually the field's spacing out, but now, through the twistier parts of the circuit, Emanuele Pirro actually gained a bit of time on race leader Rob Hall. Still, it was very, very tight across the line, fairly even, fairly even in the, in the first sector. So can Pirro try and force a mistake from his rival? Like we saw earlier on in the race, there is Rob Hall 
in the Scarlet Ferrari out front, being chased down by the Silver 73. He's got a good advantage as he is heading round into uh, what will be the final tour. Of course, even on a very hot day, tyre temperature drops away when you're not uh, going at full racing speed, and you can see the merits of the drivers at the front. They're the ones who are prepared to push harder sooner than their rivals. Uh, but this 250 LM, it, often people say if it looks right, it is right, and I can't think of many more cars that just look so nimble and right as that. But look, Piro is right there, going really quickly indeed. He's 1.2 seconds down in second place. The fight is far from over, and indeed, exactly the same can be said about the battle between Vasson Gay and number seven. Alexander van der Loft, beautiful rear side shot there as they go through Magic Corner. Has Emanuele Pirro got a special performance for us on this final lap? He's looking to extract the error. The car's moving around now. You're seeing them ever more animated from the top two. Further back, we are seeing Vincent Gay all over his mirrors. That's where his eyeline is at the moment. Because Van der Loft, having had an ordinary restart lap, is making himself really large in his wing mirrors at the moment. But in the race, I said that Alexander Van der Loft was waiting for his moment. He hasn't got any time to do it. This is the final lap of the race and that little look up the inside into St Mary's but that's on gate covered it off now your options it's not going to happen on the exit of lap and it's got to happen at Woodcourt or into the chicane just remember the value of these cars <laughs> yes the desire to improve the place of both of these drivers with the penalty as the clock ticks to zero and despite the fact that it would have been a serious examination from the mighty Emanuele Piro, Rob Hall has come up trumps and has got the restart completed to perfection. He took the lead, he had a spin, he regained the lead, he will look up and see the chequered flag first. Rob Hall wins with a superb performance to take the Levant Cup and a great, great drive with he in first and then Emanuele Piro in second. Ames will come across the line in the bread van in a fantastic performance from the back of the field to third position.